Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in this lecture, I would like to talk about humbuckers. So in a previous lecture, we introduced the idea of pickups. And in a pretty common kind of pickup design, you might have six pole pieces, one for each guitar string. And these pole pieces might themselves be magnets or they might be a ferromagnetic material, and there might be a bar magnet underneath them that's magnetizing them. And I should probably issue a bit of a correction here. Previously, I said that Jazzmaster pickups had magnetic pole pieces, whereas Stratocaster and Telecaster pickups had ferromagnetic pole pieces with a bar magnet underneath. It looks like I was wrong on that, and classic Telecaster and Stratocaster pickups had pole pieces that were themselves magnets. What confused me on that is it looks like there's a lot of Telecasters and Stratocasters out there that have pickups with the bar magnet approach. So it looks like you'll see both out there. I don't know if the introduction of the bar magnet approach was part of cost savings or what, but there's many variations. Anyway, so you have these pole pieces and this is looking top down. And the general idea is that you coil wire around it. So here's a big coil of wire. So a problem with this approach is that although you are getting the sound from the guitar string by picking up the vibrations of the string through Lenz's law, this coil is basically acting as an antenna, happily picking up whatever interference is in the background. The big one being radiation from the power lines in your wall and those are providing 60 hertz hum or 50 hertz if you're in Europe. So sometimes you'll see a guitar player on stage and they're sort of waving back and forth a little bit and there's no music going on. What they're trying to do is they're trying to figure out where to stand to minimize that hum. So this kind of coil is usually referred to as a single coil pickup. A humbucker basically takes another single coil pickup and puts it next to it. So we have another set of wire going around like this. But now the important point is that they're actually connected here. So if you're looking into the pickup up here, it looks like you're going counterclockwise, but looking down here, it looks like you're going clockwise. And so the net effect is that whatever interference is built up in one coil, that current is out of phase with the interference that's being built up in the other coil. And the general assumption is that the interference is going to be common between these. So the interference effectively gets canceled out. And you might say, wait a minute, what about my guitar signal? That will get canceled out too. Ah, here's the trick. What you do is you actually flip your magnetic field around. So if all of these are basically north pole up, what you'll do down here is you'll say, well, down here, I'll have south pole up. And there's different ways to implement this. Usually what happens is that underneath the whole humbucker, there's one bar magnet that's magnetizing some ferromagnetic pole pieces. And you have your north side up here and your south side down here. I think the Firebird pickups actually use two separate bar magnets where one of them has a face that's entirely north that's facing up and the other has a face that's entirely south facing up. There's different variations on this. So this idea here is called reverse wound, reverse polarity. And with the magnetic field being opposite, that means that it's inverting the effect of having the winding go the other direction. So while the interference destructively cancels, the signal that you want from your guitar string combines constructively. It's an incredibly clever design. Now, as a result of combining the two pickups, humbuckers are usually hotter than single coil pickups just because you have more total windings usually. And they also have higher resistance because you have more windings. And you also have higher inductance, again, because you have more windings. And as we looked at last time, that will have a lot of effect on your guitar tone by shifting the resonance bump downward. But there's also another effect that goes on with the fact that if you think about the guitar strings going on top of it, the signals that are being combined here are coming from slightly different points on the string. So they're seeing the spatial modes at slightly different spots, 
Qualitatively, this is described as having a less focused sound than single coil pickups. But of course, words are an awkward and inconvenient way to define sound. You just kind of have to hear it for yourself. To avoid this particular issue and this perceived lack of focus, some humbucker designs will only have, say, three of the pole pieces using the north pole. And down here, they'll only have three of them using the south pole. So the treble strings might be using the north pole. The bass strings might be using the south pole. So to clarify, this is a view from the top. There's another approach that's called a stacked humbucker. And this is usually an attempt to create a humbucker that will fit in a standard single coil slot instead of these wider humbucker kind of slots. Here, looking from the side, you can imagine that you have your pole pieces sitting here. And what you might do is you might wrap the coil going this direction around the pole pieces as usual. And what you'll do is you'll have the humbucking coil sitting underneath it, and you'll wire these together in the reverse round kind of format. But the one down here doesn't actually have any pole pieces in it at all. It's existing strictly to try to cancel the interference. Instead of stacking, you could also take a standard side-by-side -side humbucking kind of design and just squish it in order to try to get it to fit in a standard single coil slot. I've been talking about traditional pole piece designs, but you can also make humbuckers using rail kind of structures. And you can squish one of these rail-based humbucker designs to fit in a standard single coil slot. I also came across this rail hammer company that makes these humbuckers that have a combination of rail structures and pole pieces. I should mention that in a lot of traditional humbucker designs where you have adjustable height pull pieces, usually only one of the coils has adjustable height pieces and the other coil just has fixed height slugs. So the last main topic for this lecture is the difference between coil splitting and coil tapping. So a humbucker that enables coil splitting basically has these two leads separated. So you can connect them together and have them act as a regular humbucker. Or you can flip a switch and have them separate, in which case you could have just one of these operate as a regular single coil pickup and ignore the other. So that gives you some flexibility. This is often confused with coil tapping. Coil tapping is a concept that applies to a basic single coil configuration. And the idea behind coil tapping is that you can have another lead that basically goes to a particular point in the middle of the coil somewhere. And you could then use the full length of the coil or you could use a shorter length of the coil. So that shorter length of the coil is going to give you less output overall, but it's going to have a lower inductance and will typically then give you a brighter, chimier sound. Pickups with coil tapping facilities and guitars that use them don't seem to be very common, but it is a possibility. And I think that because true coil tapping is so rare, people will often mistakenly use the term coil tapping when they really mean to say coil splitting. Now, if you are not one of my students in my class at Georgia Tech, you can quit watching here. But if you are one of my students, keep watching. Go to Canvas and you'll find a quiz called Humbucker Quiz. And if you click on it, you will take that quiz and the quiz will have one question. I want you to tell me what is your favorite musical artist, either a band or a solo artist.